Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today let's have a closer look at this stuff. A USB constant current load and quick charge 2.0 and 3.0 controller, switcher, inducer, whatever you want to call this thing. Trigger, that's the name. And it came from Banggood. It's a 35 watt constant current double adjustable electronic load. It's priced at 1722 at the moment. Oh, note, the current product has been upgraded. Number 4. In order to better experience the work of the load tester, the product has been optimized to upgrade even below 3 volts when the fan will work and will not damage the goods because before the customer at 3 volts, the current is 4.5 amp time the device will be caused by overheating does not work so now the fun is the whole process changes with temperature promise speed the greater the power the faster the fan speed cooling better that's exactly what i needed this will enable us to put decent amount of load onto a usb power supply test the cables and the power supplies themselves and so on so let's have a look at this thing nothing too much interesting on the back just the description and the word i was looking for for a while and on the front we've got three buttons and three devices a range of leds to indicate what's happening and a few passives the device on the left of the screen i'm holding the whole board upside down just to have this in the right orientation but on one side all the pins are connected to the large plane which appears to be ground usually when i see a whole bunch of pins connected on one side all together that immediately makes me think a mosfet but this is not the case over here at 24c02 a 2k serial eprom and the pins that are shorted to ground are address pins a0 a1 and a2 those address pins are used if you want to have more than one device on a single two-wire bus. So clock and data comes on those two pins and this is bi-directional so you can read and write through those. In this case the device address is set to 000. You could have another one connected to the same pins, just change one of those pins to one, then both of those could share the two-wire bus to communicate. It's not a MOSFET, even though at first glance I thought that's what it is. Then we've got a mystery chip and that's not uncommon from inexpensive stuff coming over from china this has got no markings at all we can be quite sure that this is some sort of microcontroller communicating to the memory and then outputting through those and those resistors and injecting different voltages onto the data pins third device here on the right 5 volt voltage regulator for supplying power and we've got some little leds indicating 2.0 mode or 3.0 what voltage is on the bus and with the buttons here we will be able to change the mode between quick charge 2 and 3 and up and down the voltage and the way this is done if you have a closer look at the back we've got usb input and output for usb pins both the power ones and the data lines are going through straight across from input to the output this is just a pass through however there are a few vias on the data lines got a couple of vias here and another two here those are vias here and here microcontroller through those resistors depending on which resistors are set high and low sets different voltages on the data pins and by doing so it's able to change usb charging mode of the device that's connected to the input of this might not be all just analog voltage set on the data pins i think with quick charge there is some intelligent two-way communication between the device supplying the power and the device taking the power that's what it does now this the actual load so the device that will sync the current from the usb source and yeah turn it into heat it's a single board construction with a couple of pots for coarse and fine adjustments piece of acrylic that's stuck on the bottom just to be able to place this on the surface without shorting any components out heatsink again on the opposite sides of the mosfets i think there might be a cutout a little lcd screen and the heatsink with a fan on it there's also a large number of usb connectors on the side it's not entirely clear what those are for but we've got one and two micro usbs lightning connector usb type C mini USB and 2 pin terminal to just connect plain old wires into it. This USB is marked as sys power and by plugging something into this we will be able to power up the device. That could be handy for example when dealing with a power bank that requires a minimal current to be drawn otherwise it shuts off. This would just reboot this device which normally powers from the source that we're trying to test. Now as far as the rest of those connectors here I'm not entirely sure there's one more USB to connect 
this onto it like so it seems like both of those are just connected pin to pin I have a little JST connector for the fan so we can get that disconnected and the screws which are just long screws into the heatsink right in between the fins I have to be careful here because the display is just stuck with a double-sided tape onto the heatsink and the fan on the side of it don't want to necessarily have to resolder this so I'm gonna try to make as little movement on the solder joint over there and two more screws which when removed allow us to remove the little piece of acrylic still got the protective paper stuck onto it the middle one is holding the power transistor tip 122 very popular transistor it's a power dialing term do up to 5 amps of course provided sufficient heat sinking I can see a little bit of thermal paste on the bottom over here right under the legs and then someone left a bit on the side of the board so yeah that's good so there's some thermal paste between the device and the heat sink so here's the input very often the board looks nice and clean after it goes through reflow but after it comes out of the oven they have to hand solder the connectors a couple of larger bits that's when it usually gets messy this was not going through the reflow nor was this here is what i was talking about earlier we've got both of the usb connectors just straight pass through on the data lines however the power line is not so i think that's to prevent connecting a load to this input and affecting the reading on on this device on the load this wouldn't know about the current that goes out from here so this power pin goes through current sense resistor account for the current that flows out of this usb connector in this corner here we've got some power conversion happening so we've got an inductor capacitor schottky diode chip that markings say mc34063a and that's a dc to dc converter from motorola slash on semi 24C32B for all in all looks like some sort of EEPROM. Similar scenario like in the other one we've got the pins tied to ground. Interesting mystery chip 00RAT04. Oh that's a funny marking. I'm not sure why did I even try but of course there is no data sheet on this. Here are the various USB ports chip that's connected to the lightning connector. This could be the evil chip that allows the Apple devices to actually communicate with the charger. That's the SysPower protection diode here so all in all this looks good let's power it up and see how this quick charging thing works and we will be able to draw some serious power from this i'll still be running it at 36 volts for this purpose today we'll see how hot can we get this thing to come up let's stick this into one of the usb 2.0 chargers and we've got something coming up on the screen annoyingly we can't look at both screens at the same time 20 milliamps is the minimum power draw on this so i guess that's the bare minimum required to have this up and running if we keep increasing the load let's see what happens 2.2 amps so that should be no problem for a power supply 2.3 over 3 amps from a single USB port it starts cutting out 2.0 it, it's still there but see the LED starts flickering yeah that's without any quick charge mode enabled on this there's one button the load shows us voltage on the usb the current draw the time watt hours amp hours and the current power draw so if we increase it it updates about once a second so that's all good useful information pressing it once gets it to another useful screen v10 volts v plus 5.16 so that's the usb then d plus and d minus those are the data lines at the moment they are both at 2.78 volts 8.82 to ohm that's the resistance the equivalent resistance on the darlington transistor the tip one to two ad 43 so probably is the temperature of the heatsink yeah and the temperature is rising so let's see when the fan will kick in 48 49 50 okay 55 the fan kicked in so i've just dropped the current down it will cool down okay so 45 degrees is where it decides to switch it off uh, this box is getting warm so we'll have a look what's going on inside in a moment 3.0 port so is it the same will it cut off at the same power oh by the way there is one more screen on here but this one shows pretty much the same information as the other one however with chinese description this one not very useful and clicking it once more goes back to the main screen two and a half amps is significantly more power from this over three amps now 4 amps 20 watts 4.3 and still at 5 volts wow 4.4 amps at 5 volts drawing from this quick charge 3 port rocks on this usb power supply delivering a lot what tempo are we at with a fan at 58 degrees does not seem to be rising 
21, 22 watts, quite a bit of power. Power supply, the entire board is quite warm, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. So let's try this out and let's see what we can get out of this power supply using this little board. Let's use one of the quick charge 2.0 ports first. This board lights up to LEDs, so it says quick charge 2.0, 4 to 6 volts. So let's see if by pressing those buttons we can change anything. Well, we can't. The mode doesn't seem to allow us to switch over to quick charge 3. And let's see if we can go up in voltage. Uh, no, we can't. It's trying to do something. Oh, it went to quick charge 3. But as we try to go up, nothing's happening because, I don't know, quick charge 2.0. Let's see if we increase the current on here. So 1.75 amps. No, this doesn't change anything in the 2.0 mode. Let's see how this will behave with a quick charge 3 port. 5 volts, 1.3 amps. If we change it to quick charge 3 now. Go up. Hmm, that's not doing much for us, is it? Now it went up, it went up to 9 volts. Okay, it goes up now. So 12 volts, 2.5 amps. That's 30 watts, and this is quite hot now. I'm gonna drop the current a little bit. Quite a bit of heat happening here. Okay, I think I got the feel for it. So this charger will not go to the 15 to 20 volt range. So that would be the last diode. So as you can see, we're in the 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt next one will be 15 that doesn't happen so it stays in the 12 volt and pressing it one more time goes back to the 5 volt now this all happens in the quick charge 2.0 on the quick charge 3.0 port but if i change to quick charge 3 something is making a quite a loud noise but i can't tell which device is it making is it this or that presumably this can be also connected this way that's why it has the female connector on the other end so let's give it a go will it behave in the same way okay as you can see it can work this way as well i've noticed there is a little glitch on the power supply on the display as you can see there is nothing wrong with the display it's not missing any it's not got any dead pixels but if i go into the 12 volts the 2 is displayed in a funny way like that it only happens when it's in this voltage range so about 12 volts or so but not in any other one i think i've worked something out so check this out quick charge mode 2.0 this is set right now to 700 milliamps. With a single press, we can select between five and higher voltages on the output. Single press does the trick. But when you go into quick charge 3.0, it doesn't want to change. However, if I double press up, it starts blinking and then it will go as high as it can because this doesn't support the 15 volts out it will stop at this and it will stay at that and then to go back down again single press doesn't do much but a double press will drop it back down to the nominal voltage 3.0 works slightly differently on here than 2.0 as long as we know what to do that should be fine so this is quite good quite happy with that that will come really really handy Let's try this again, see how hot did it get inside. The box is quite warm. So the heatsink is at 75 degrees C. Let's try one of the MOSFETs. Yeah, 78, 79. And I'm touching the tab on, of the MOSFET that's on the quick charge 3.0 side. 79, 80 degrees, so that's quite toasty. The inductor itself is 85, 89, 90 degrees on the inductor. The other one should be significantly colder and it is the switching chips those are actually not too bad it's the circuit board itself not entirely those chips that are causing the major heat problem so maybe i was unnecessarily worried about this yeah it does get hot but it's manageable and by the way those chips i've read in the data sheets they've got a thermal shutdown at 165 degrees if it gets stupidly hot they will shut down and stop producing the power my only worry is that if those failed in some catastrophic way and the mosfets got short then the 36 volts from the input potentially could go to the output on the USBs and kill whatever you've got connected to it. So that's the USB electronic load tested and you see how it works. The most advanced one there is. I think it's quite a nice piece of kit once you know how to use this and with the double clicking on the different quick charge modes. Yeah, it was a little bit confusing but we worked it out. Seems like a reasonably made piece of kit that will come really handy in many experiments to come. But for this video today that is it. Hope you enjoyed it please do like and share the videos comment below and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already hit the bell button and for now take care